I guess we're rolling. Are we rolling? Go for it. Welcome to yeah. the DG Show. We're rolling. Let's do it. For, I appreciate you. Please, if you will, I have one request. Tell me. Do not walk off the podcast like Dana did the Howie Man. That's the only one we got. <laughs> Other than that, uh, anything goes. That's fun. Uh, so as long as you don't do that. But I welcome. saw him doing that. By the way, it, was, it, was it an act or was it like, what ended up happening with that? They we were just talking know, about right, it. Right, where it was or. No. Because the full podcast never came out. No. Okay. He walked so maybe off. Maybe it was real. Do you, what do you, okay, so you've been on a lot of podcasts. Yes. Patrick Beck, David, for you that don't know, but you've never walked out on one. No. Have you had anyone walk out? I had one guy who almost walked out, and he was getting uh, uh, upset and agitated. We were having a big debate. I can't believe you said that. I can't believe. I'm going to walk it. I said, you can walk out. And he said, oh, but I'm not. I said, okay, <laughs> all right, great. And we've had some heated ones. By yeah. the way, like the, the one with me and Anthony Weiner has got bad. very, very, very bad. Never walked out. We never stopped. We finished it. It was great. And after the uh, debate, he was a sport about it. Fantastic. Awesome. Moved on. We were good to go. But yeah, no, not, neither for me yet. It's, what do you think there had to be premeditation there? With Dana? Yeah. So only if the full podcast comes out, then there's premeditation. If the full podcast didn't come out, then maybe it's real. Or the other thing is, in the beginning of it, Dana says, Howie, something just came up. I got to go. I'm sorry. I can't do yeah. this. And then Howie says, well, then why don't we do something with the time that we have? Why don't you actually say you're walking out and give me that footage to use? Guess what? You didn't need to do a two-hour podcast yeah. to get that going viral. That one small little clip got more eyeballs than a full than podcast everything. would have gotten. So good, whoever came up with that idea or, again, if it's real, check. Yeah. If it's that idea, respect. If it's the fact that they did it, it's not out yet, but it's going to be big, well, stay tuned. Well, and not to mention, I would hate to be the guy, though, that ruined podcasts for Dana White because no one's ever going to watch your show again. Yeah, and Dana is the type of guy that once he's done, he's done. He's done. He's done. He's like, I'm done. You'll never see me do it. Like the, what he did with Peloton and what he did with get the stuff out of here. We're not going to use these guys again. And that's what you get with a guy like that. He trusts in his way of doing business so much. He's got so much conviction and he takes care of his people so good that he doesn't worry about keeping high standards and making decisions like this ain't I'm out of here. Yeah. You got to respect that. Dude, I, I'm the, I, once you leave, you're dead to me. I feel like if you quit on the goals and dreams, the vision of the organization, one, I failed you, right? But you're dead to me, and I don't want to come back because I feel like if you quit on me once, you'll quit on me easier mm -hmm. next time, and it's only just going to be easier for you. So I've already done it. How, are, have you brought people back? It depends on what you quit on. So, okay. for example, did you quit, quit on me? Did you quit because you were going through a divorce? Did you quit because... Okay, yeah. You had a family thing happening. Did you quit? And it's it's real. And by the way, yeah. a person can leave and they can tell you why why they're quitting. And then six, 12 months later, the real story comes out. You're like, yeah, you were BSing. You know, I'm leaving because I'm joining the military. And you don't. You were full of shit. Yeah. I'm leaving because, you know, my dad's going through this. Your dad lives another 20 years. You were full. You know, I'm leaving because. Or no, this guy was really like one of the times that a guy that quit. And I had no idea what was going on. It was so sudden. But he wouldn't yeah. tell me why. I found out, very ugly divorce with his wife. Wow. And it was nasty. Then I'm like, hey, man, all good. You ain't got to worry about it. Totally get it. But if you would have told me, we were just kind of taking a break. You would have been facing it. But I was so embarrassed. And, you know, I so said, totally get it. So sometimes it's real. Sometimes people are just looking for a way to quit. People are driving down a road. They see a billboard and it says, sometimes you have to quit to find something easy. That was a sign. You know what? You I'm out of here. It's like yeah. the most... And, and it's selective hearing. If you really want to see something that's going to inspire you to make a bad decision, you're going to find you're it. You're going to find it everywhere you yeah, look. Yeah, it's going to be everywhere. Everywhere you look. Yeah, and uh, I, I have that. And it's, but I did have a guy like his, his you know, death in the family. And he was like, hey, man, I got to move away for a few months. Basically, leave of absence. 100% on that. But if you quit just for another opportunity, I just don't want you back. I just, I feel like that opportunity should go for somebody else. That How much does that drive you? So much. It drives okay. me. It fuels me. Right. Um, if I'm a... So I'm a, I'm not like a competitor. And actually one of the questions I had for you was I saw Jordan and Kobe up there, right? So it tells me, mm -hmm. obviously you can mm -hmm. tell by people. I feel mm -hmm. like business is like sports. It's mm -hmm. the closest thing we'll get, being mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. Um, what, like an athlete you relate to? Like if, if you were to say, who is Patrick Bet David? And they didn't know you as business. And they said, pick a sports figure. Who would you think would represent you? Different phases of my life is different to uh, athletes. So in my 20s, it's Kobe. 
it's 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 Michael, it's assassin, it's wanting to kill the competitor, all that stuff. In my 30s, it's more of a collaborative guy, a Brady, bringing people together, and hey, getting guys to be good in a locker room, and you know, rallying, and also an element of fill and GM mindset, craft mindset. Steinburner, a little bit of Jerry Buss. It's kind of, you, you think about it from a different p- uh, perspective. So it all depends on what f- uh, uh, age it was. You know, you take different things. But early on, I mean, it's, it's Kobe and Michael. Who is it right now? Today's none of them. Uh, not because it's anything uh, uh, against them. You know, I have a lot of respect. I mean, you see, I have Michael yeah. stuff everywhere. I have Kobe stuff everywhere. I, uh, today it's... You know, you win in a space, you go to the next level. What are you going to do to recreate yourself to win at the next level? It's very hard to do. It's not easy to do. You know, you win in business, then you want to go win in media, then you want to win in politics. Who has done that? Not a lot of people, right? So I don't the, know who. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, there there's, is a, there's, there's one. A, there's one, and there's not that many of them yeah. that have done that. But, you know, you, you kind of have to size that up. So for me, when I look at media guys, what they did historically, you know, what Kirk Krikorian did with MGM or what Ted Turner did with early on with Ted, you know, Turner with CNN and, you know, buying up the Falcons, the Hawks, whatever it was when he owned the team, the, the Braves the and Braves, all these yeah. guys he owned and what he did with the 24-7 news and watching what some of these visionaries did. You know, those guys, um, those guys make me think on the level of wealth that was created and the level of influence they made. So it's different than sports because sports is at a phase, then you have to figure out a way to recreate yourself or else the, the next level of enemy, you can no longer be Michael and Jordan because your goal now is to recruit a Michael and Jordan. Yeah. So how do you recruit a Michael and Jordan? How do you create a climate where a Michael or Jordan, Michael or Kobe would want to be in, in, in that kind of an environment, right? So is my business attractive enough to attract the next Michael, the next Kobe, the next great CMO, the next great C-suite executive, the next great whatever maybe. So you can't take the same exact approach. Yeah, I think that's what was so special about Kobe's career. He, almost, he had literally two careers. In the first part of his career, he had that killer mindset. And then when he grew the 24, he started working on the recruiting and growing people. And then I think that's why you see all those stories come out. What's funny is you rarely see a great Kobe story from early in his career. You don't see the where he was the, you see the work ethic, but you don't see the leadership, Kobe, until later in his career. And I've actually modeled a lot of my career just early on after that. He's one of a kind. He's, He's the, one of a kind. What is, uh, so visionaries. Obviously, you're a visionary. That's yeah, Who's your favorite visionary of all time? Who's my favorite visionary of all time? I, I don't know if I can tell you who's my favorite visionary of all time. Like if you, okay, anybody that maps out, I'll give you one here. Joseph Kennedy. Okay, here's a guy whose mother and father have three kids. He's one of three. It's three or four kids. He's one of, but the rest are girls. Dad dies at an early age. Mom is by herself. She decides to start a business or invest into a business. Out of her three kids, the one son, you know, Joseph Kennedy, is super driven. By 25 years old, he becomes a youngest president of a bank, and he ends up getting into Harvard, I believe, from the favors and the relationships that his dad had. He never liked that part. But then Joseph gets in, and he becomes the bank uh, 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 president. Then he starts learning about networking, the power of networking. Then all of a sudden, he gets close to FDR. He promises FDR that if I get you elected, I want you to make me the chairman of the SEC. He gets him elected. He becomes a chairman of the SEC. This is the guy that caused the stock market to crash, yeah. Joseph Kennedy. And the 1929 crash, many would say a big part of it was Joseph Kennedy. So then you, FDR, appoint him, and he becomes the ambassador to UK under FDR. So he's going back and forth, Chamberlain negotiations. So when the war is taking place with Hitler, he, he feels he's not a guy that wants the war to extend. He, he goes and has a conversation with Nazis. Story breaks. Story breaks that he did that. Chamberlain gets fired. He quits, resigns, he pretty much gets fired yeah. by FDR. The chance of him becoming a president is done with. He's not going to be a president. Joseph Kennedy was supposed to be a president. Then he has kids. He has Joseph, uh, Joseph Kennedy, oldest son. Then he's got RFK and he's got John Kennedy. They all go to the military. John, the youngest son, while he's on a ship, 
The ship sinks. He makes it. He gets a Purple Heart. It drives the hell out of his oldest son to say, wait a minute, my youngest son is, my youngest brother is okay. getting more eye light, uh, limelight than I am. The oldest uh, son decides to go become a pilot, gets killed in war. Joseph Kennedy is destroyed because his oldest son that he was his favorite dies and he was supposed to be a president. And what ends up happening? His youngest son become a president, becomes a president. Nine months after his son becomes a president, Joseph Kennedy has a stroke. When Joseph Kennedy has a stroke, he could no longer mentor his kids and his family members. RFK, his other son, decides to go after the mob, even though the mob helped his son become a president. He goes after the mob. They end up killing his uh, son, John wow. F. Kennedy. They end yeah. up killing RFK. But till today, you know how many Kennedys are in, uh, you know, in politics right now that kind of rolls up play? They're all over the place. Yeah. All of this is a byproduct of one visionary that had a it's vision one. for it. In 1950, his net worth was a half a billion dollars. In 1950, he financed his son's campaign. He paid for his son's campaign until eventually they raised some money. I love a man and a father that's got a vision for the entire family with a set of standards that's, such, that's so high and, and, and inspires the family want to make the father proud and wants to make the last name proud. And uh, you got to respect that. So to me, the visionaries I look at is not just in business. It's also in politics. It's also in family, last names, you know, whatever the Medici's thought about, the Rockefellers thought about, the, you know, the Walton family right now. I don't know how Walton's familiar crazy, you are with the yeah. Walton family. They got a, their, their entire family is four kids. They're, they're, Poorest one is worth sixty billion dollars. Yeah, can you imagine? Imagine being the broke one and you're sixty billion. That's right. Hey man, how you everything good? Yeah. Can I Brokey. you know go fund me? <laughs> some? So, but but the point is, all of that is a byproduct of a godfather at the top. Yeah, I respect men like that. It's leaders the, like that. I'm being a father changed my entire life. Like there was, there's still another when people are like business. I'm like, look, man, you have no idea. You're chasing this, and to me, it's just about being grounded and being a good father. And I feel like most of my decisions come in being a good father and being a good husband. And it's, it's just something so special to me, man. It's what I love more than anything in the world. Uh, 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 the world. And being, oh, I almost changed my last name. Funny story is because I don't know my dad. I don't know my real dad. I don't know his name. Like, I have no idea. So I have my mother's maiden last name. So I went through all my troubles. And when my wife was pregnant, she was about eight months pregnant. And I said, I'm just not proud of this name. It doesn't mean anything to me. I don't, my mom's a drug addict. Uh, I was homeless at 14. I don't know my real dad's name. There was three names on the birth certificate. I said, it just doesn't mean anything to me. And I don't want to bring a son into this world with this last name. So she, we, we looked at different last names to change because she hadn't changed it yet because we had been married for about a year. And so she hadn't changed it on all of her stuff. So I said, it'll just be easy. She's like, let's talk about it after the kid comes. And I remember the day he was born, like all the pain like left my body. And I remember, I was like, I'm going to make this kid proud that I'm his father. Like the Gakowski last name is going to start today. Like this is going to be something special. I will die before... I let it be tarnished Sick. And, it, and it was man it was crazy and so for you obviously i see you with your kids actually one of the things it's i don't i don't care about the business side like that doesn't it, it's it's what you've accomplished is special but it's the the family side i see you with your kids how has being a father you know husband changed your perspective maybe on business and do you see a lot of correlations with it you know when i was six years old teacher asked what do you want to be when you grow up and i'm in iran i said i want to be a dad Really? Because my dad, he and I have such a good relation. He lives with us right now. He's got a, I got him a nice room. He's been with us for two and a half years. And I used to be roommates with him. When I got out of the Army, we lived together. Well, my dad ended up becoming my best friend. And my dad had a few different things he would teach. He would always say, never be afraid of uh, the truth. And he would be tough on me. And he would say, the reason why I'm tough on you right now is because I'm going to be your father for this many years with the hopes of one day being your best friend for the rest of our lives. And that ended up happening, right? So That's awesome. I wanted to be an element of him. And then later on, when at a Christmas party, somebody disrespected him, I said, it's game over. The world's going to know your last name. I'm going to make you proud like you don't even know. And it's been a fire till today. I'm 45 years old till today. That's, awesome. that's, that's not gone away. But what do kids do? You know, like right now, how many places are you at? How many places am I at? I'm right now at five different places, okay? I'm at where I'm at, which is here, but I'm also where my four kids and my wife are at. That's where I'm at. Yeah. So where's my oldest, Tico? Where's my Dylan, who he's oh, very thankful for the like shoes, the shoes. He's he's he loves the style, shoes. Man. You're kidding me, he wears yeah. it all the time. So Dylan, Senna, Brooklyn, Mommy, I'm there. So constantly, where are they? What are they doing? Yeah. How's the family doing? It's a very different kind of a, a, a thought pattern that you have. 
as you have kids, you also realize you're not God. So you're either going to choose to be God, which you're going to fail, or you're going to choose to have faith in God, which that gives you a little bit more peace of mind to know that you can't do all of this thing by yourself. Next, supporting cast. The same way you know, you hire somebody, like I send one of my executives to go to Harvard for a week and I spend $25,000 to go for a program, or I'm going to send two of my guys to go to Kellogg to become better sales executives, or I'm going to send two of my guys to go to Wharton to become better CMOs, right? That's $25,000 each person you send. That's yeah. a lot of cost when, when you're sending them there. And they go, they come back. Now, they learn things from others that you didn't teach them, but they bring that value back to everybody here. Yeah. You don't have to get credit for that. You're just glad that that growth is taking Absolutely. place, right? So who can you have around your kids to help them become better mentally, emotionally, feed the creative side that they have, sports, athletic, whatever that may be. So then it's about finding a better core system for them. This year I did a business plan. It's my favorite business plan I've ever done. And this year's business plan, I wrote specifically what I envision with my kids, my oldest, my youngest, all of it, yeah. detailed, what I'm going to be doing with them. Only three people have read the business plan. One of the people that read the business plan, one of the guys that read my business plan is my oldest son. So I said, I want you to read daddy's business plan. It's like 15 pages, 10 pages. I said, I want you to read it. How old is he? He's 12 years old. So I want to see his face. Yeah. And by the way, it's very detailed and it's very raw and it's emotional. And I have things in mind that I want to do with you because I want to see your dreams become a reality. And I'm sitting there, it's 10 o'clock at night and he's reading it. And I'm seeing him getting emotional while he's reading it. How excited he's getting about yeah. it, right? And I watch him like, and I know what section he's in. I'm like, okay, he's going through it right now. And that feeling to know my freaking dad cares about my dreams becoming a reality, yeah. right? Because at 28 years old, the moment I realize what my number one goal in life is, it's not to be a billionaire, it's not to have a big house, it's not to be famous, it's not to have all the cars, all the toys, all the clothes, it's to be a leader amongst leaders. When I die, I want leaders to show up to my funeral who are well, well respected to say, this guy influenced our lives and wanted nothing from us. If that is my MO and my number one priority in life that has to do with me being a better father, how can I lead my kids? How can I lead my community? How can I lead my heritage? How can I lead my employees? How can I lead my investors? In every platform, you're just figuring out a way how to be a better leader, right? Yeah. So that perspective of having kids change things in a, in a big way because that's when you start experiencing what it feels like, like multi-generational. And every business I build right now, or holding company right now that we're building these eight companies, the vision with Valuetainment in a selfish way is to build something that one day all my kids, their kids, my grandkids, are going to want to somehow, some way, be want, part of the family be business. Of so if it's a small business, I'm limited. Yeah. If it's a big business, they have different choices on how they want to go. Now, whether that's going to happen or not, that's the vision. Now yeah. it's about daddy going out there and Gotta proving right. So, but that's how things change with kids. Yeah. It's, uh, would you, did you, do you have more patience? Cause when before I had zero patience, right? So it was before I was an entrepreneur. So I, I came an entrepreneur after my son was born. It made me want to create something, borrow time. But before I was very impatient with people. I thought everybody needs to go to my level. It was almost Kobe when he was number eight. It was, you didn't show up to practice early, you're fired. You didn't do this, you're fired. I tried to make everybody. After I had my son, it was, I'm not going to fire you for no matter what you do. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to coach you. I'm going to inspire you. I'm not going to, I don't want to yell and scream at you. I don't want to do those things. I want to show you the way and the best ways, the model, the way. If, if I'm not the best man I need to be, then I'm never going to teach you how to be a man. And I didn't have a father figure at all. So it was learning as I go. Respect. And I didn't have the patience though. Like if somebody was, it was, it would freak. And then it was your birthday? December, December 18th. Okay. So it was no patience, but when my son, what I noticed was I had the same goal. Like, man, I got it's my duty to create more leaders, right? It's it's my duty to be there for people and impact them. If they leave, if they leave us, I want them better than when they started as people. I don't care about the professional side because if you're good personally, there's high odds you're going to be great mm -hmm. professionally. Mm -hmm. But I just the patience piece was a lot. But when I had my kid, you know, it's like let's just use the spills milk. But you don't fire him. You're going to talk him why he spilled the milk, talk him through it. And I just noticed that my patience and, and so but what happened was my business exploded. Because when people made a mistake, instead of criticizing, instead of critiquing, instead of, I, I, I looked to coach and empathize with 
this guy made a mistake. There's got to be something else going on. Like, what's going on? Did you ever, did you see a switch on that? Yeah. I mean, my dad, uh, two months ago, it's he and I were talking. I'm like, look, man, I'm, I'm, this is pissing me off. That's pissing me off. This is pissing me off. And he's just sitting there. He's like, yeah, okay. Are you done? I said, yeah. <laughs> he says, look, you're very patient and you're very forgiving and you love people. So whatever you're saying, I totally get it. But you, you, you have no idea how patient you become. I can't even believe who you are today, okay? Because you become patient. Part of that is age, part of that is wisdom, part of that is mistakes, part of that is kids, part of that is your wife, part of that is your family, part of that is the people in your life. And, uh, you know, you, you, you hope to keep getting better. This is the whole thing about when you talk about Kobe and the player mindset to the leader mindset to the builder mindset. And the builder mindset is creating a climate where a Kobe can stay within an organization for 20 years and evolve from eight to yeah. 24 and all of that stuff. And, you know, your kids are going to disappoint you. They're going to piss you off. They're going to do a lot of different things. But, you know, if, if you're thinking long term and you're learning the gift of forgiveness, the difference with the business world is I, I understand, you know, like my the only thing that's different for me is I'm very comfortable firing people. There's five things I value. I value effort, attitude, innovation, teamwork, and results, okay? Those five things I value. Doesn't mean you're going to make a lot of money with me with those five things, but guess what? If you have those five things, you always have a job. You stay here, here forever. Period, yeah. right? Now, if you want to make real good money, it's those five things plus specialized skill. That specialized skill, finance, HR, he came from Uber, was the HR at Uber. He's not here with us, you know? Uh, see, see our chief growth officer, he was at Disney working with Iger, now he's here, he was at Amazon, now he's here. You know, you're bringing a level of expertise. My guy Ben Pappas in the corner, he's on Manect as well. Yeah. You know, he, he's coming after you, by the way. He told me very clear, he's like, I'm going good after luck. Dustin, good luck. <laughs> good, you, good. You've been growing, you got good a lot luck. of stuff going on, it's exciting. No, but Ben, I've known him for 23 years, 22 years. And Ben was one of the first guys I hired as a sales guy. And he had this Forbes magazine behind him saying, one day I want to be on the cover of Forbes. And it was one of those yeah. guys, rough around the edges, chip on his shoulder. But then he goes, builds an insurance company, sells it, then becomes a CIO of a company, takes it from $27 million to a billion dollars, reaches out to me seven months ago. He says, Pat, I want to run with you. I said, come on down here. He comes here, goes to the vault conference. He's about to get on his flight to go back to LA. I said, listen, get off your flight. So I'm on the flight. I said, get off the flight. He gets off the flight. I said, stay here for a week. Stays here for a week, sees everything we got going on. He says, I think I can help you out with the following. Come on board. So I don't have a problem firing if Same. you are a small thinking guy that's entitled, bad attitude, you don't fit culturally, any of that stuff. But if you have effort, attitude, teamwork, innovation, results, and you're willing to have a specialized skill that you work on, you can work with me for the rest of your mm -hmm. life. Well, and two, so many, we always look for the next, you, you said it earlier. You look for the next Michael Jordan. You look for the next Kobe. But how many times do you find them? Those are generational talent. But championships are won with role players. Jordan doesn't win two championships without Steve Kerr and John Paxson hitting those big shots. Mm -hmm. And so we always want to coach people sometimes. It's better to coach C players to C+. Plus. I get it. You want to take Cs to Bs. And if you're a great leader, you will. But you got to remember is that those people that you know just, they, they have those skills, they're trustworthy, right attitude, all the results, which we love results – those those are the type of people you're going to win long term with mm -hmm. as well because they're mm -hmm. going to stay with you for a long time. Mm -hmm. But then here's the crazy part: one of those people might develop into a rock star. We've seen that happen many a times. And I want to I want to go with one, something you said, and I think this is a big struggle for a lot of people. The whole cliche of what got you there won't get you there. But you said it earlier. I was this player at this time, which I think hits it right on the head. Early in my career, I was this. Then I was this. What things? It's especially too because the people you surround yourself with. You're talking about. We were just talking about this earlier. Uh, about who you surround yourself with. If you show me, I, if I could just look at the people you hang around with and I know everything about you because they're a reflection of you in the grand scheme of things and who you want around you. How, as you grow, do you audit not only yourself, you audit what you're doing to go to the next level and audit the people around you as you're growing, right? Because there's that, if you audit too hard and you change too much, you lose what you have. How do you, how do, you do that in a way and how have you been able to manage that? Well, I mean, look, there's... Kobe, you keep talking about Kobe and Michael. So Kobe said, you're, 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 like, you're not as important as you think you are. I'm like, Kobe, why'd you miss these five air balls? Like at, against Utah, Shaq's there's like another air ball, another air ball, and you guys lost that game. What were you thinking going into the locker room? He says, well, I realized in high school, I was paying 35 games. 
In NBA, I'm playing 82 games. So the later in the game, later in the season, my legs were weak. So he says, the shot was straight and accurate, but it didn't have the distance. Sure. It's because of my legs. He says, that season I worked on my legs, then I was able to get to it, right? Because he understood the 35 versus 82 games. But he says, who do you think you are? You're not that big of a deal, right? I mean, that concept of you're not that big yeah. of a deal. And Marcus Aurelius in Meditations, when you read about this guy, and he's got a slave sitting in the back of his, you know, constantly whispering in his ear, you're not as important as you think you are. You're not as important as you think you are. I mean, I'm maybe not saying exact words that he said, but you, you kind of need to have a little bit of that. And it's almost like a bipolar relationship because there's got to be a part of you that you feel you're chosen to do something mm -hmm. big. But if it's 100% you believe this and 0%, who do you think you are? You're not that big of a deal. Yeah. You're going to be your own enemy. Ryan Garcia and I were having a conversation together yesterday. I didn't like his behavior this last couple of weeks. Yeah. Some of the things he's doing is very weird, but I, I like Ryan Garcia. I really want to see this guy win and do big things for yeah. himself. And if I'm, if I'm able to impact you in a positive way, give you feedback, I'm going to give it to you. So we got on the phone yesterday. Or we had a call together. I said, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what this behavior is about. Well, what if you knew what I knew? Wouldn't you want to tell the world about it? Fine, then quit boxing. I don't want to quit boxing. Then lock it, lock up, lock up yeah. and stay focused. What are you doing here? You got a fight on 420 against Devin Haney, who's 31 and 0. What are we doing here? So that, that element of you're a big deal, but you're not you're a big, not deal, big deal, man. Your boxing career is going to end. Nobody cares about Evander Holyfield today. We don't wake up in the morning saying, let me see the Evander Holyfield fight today. Yeah. Tyson and Jake Paul launched their fight today, right? In Tyson's Dallas. In Dallas at the AT&T Arena, they're talking about 80,000 people. Tyson's going to be 58 at the fight because his birthday is in June. The fight's in July 20th. And I think Jake just had a birthday. I think he's a January 28th baby. He's a late January baby, and he just turned 27. 27 against 58. Okay, I get that. That fight is coming up. So, But if you're only thinking about, you know, I'm so special, I'm so important, like affirmations used to be, you're the best leader in the world. You're the best speaker in the world. You're da 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 da. I'm like, I don't believe this. No, this is bullshit. Like, yeah. well, but that's how you need to do it because the most powerful word in the dictionary is I. And when you say I, I'm like, okay, cool. I will. I get it. So I changed my affirmations and I said, you know, you need one additional sentence to add to it. You can be one of the greatest leaders in the world if dot 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 dot. Okay, so when yeah. Dylan and I would speak and I would say, I, I, Dylan James by David, Dylan, Dylan James by David, well, one day, one day, B.A., B.A., great leader. What's the key word in that sentence? I, Dylan James by David, will one day be a great leader. What is the most powerful word outside of the I? What is the most powerful two words in that sentence? Will? The, the word. I, Dylan James by David, will one day be a great one leader. One day. Yeah. Why is it the one day? Because you're not there yet. It's a, it's a constant quest. It's a constant quest. It's so constant quest. sometimes if you don't have that perspective, you're going to be like, well, you're running a successful business. What are you doing per year? 40 million at this time? I don't know what the yeah, number is, but you're doing 40, really, really yeah. good, right? Okay. I think we suck. Yeah, but, but, but you're making more money than you've ever made yeah, in your right. life before. You're like, yeah. I've never made this kind of money. To most guys, they're sitting there saying, I'd love to be Dustin and you know, have the life that he has, be all the places he's at, podcasts, Kevin, all these guys you got going on, right? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Most friends are probably thinking you're a rock star, right? Okay. So to me, when somebody sees and is like, whoa, how's it feel? Your stuff has been everywhere on TikTok and Instagram, and I'm seeing you everywhere. What does that feel like? Nothing. Yeah, it feels Because like I'm going on a 40-year run. That's automatic. What do you think supposed to happen? This is part of the game. Yeah. You think I'm supposed to pause and celebrate this? It's all part of the game, but I'm on a 40-year run. Exactly. So that, that part, if you're able to, the more successful you get, the more you need an element of, you need more humility. You know, the less successful you are, you need words of affirmation, of positivity. You can do this, go get it, all this stuff. Yeah. But as you're winning more, you got to be like, ah, uh, yeah, and I don't I'm know not. if it's, yeah. Uh, maybe you got lucky, you know, stick around five more years. Uh, let's see if you can keep this wealth yeah. and this. Um, so, but unfortunately, the more we win, the cockier we get. And, and that ends up backfiring. This is why very few people stay at the top for too long. It's not easy to do. It's a very, very hard game. You know, there's only a couple people, singers, who have had a number one hit in four different decades. I think if I'm not mistaken, it's Ray Charles and Stink. Really? 
only four people had a number one hit in four different decades. Somebody can fact check me, and maybe there's a couple other people. But think about, That's can you imagine you have a number one hit in four different decades, and music evolves? Think about hip hop in the 80s yeah. versus 90s versus mumble rap. <laughs> you know, but imagine you have a number one hit. All through that. Boom, boom, boom. How do you, How do, you do, that? do that? That's very... So that's why Stink, one of a kind. You ever watch his documentary? M mind boggling when he's at his house in Paris or Tuscany or whatever they're doing. He brings all the guys together. He makes the song Desert Roads with Chef Mame. I Dream of Rain. I'm sure you've heard the song before. So Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles, what these guys are doing. So to me, if, if you don't recreate yourself in those moments, you're going to be a one hit wonder or once a decade. Right, you did good for a decade, but not for forty years. I almost feel like a lot of the the great ones, as they have more success, they almost doubt themselves more. It's almost a weird thing. Like I was so cocky when I had nothing, and almost like uh, the same thing, like affirmations. I can take over the world. I'm gonna do this. And now, I, someone asked me the other day, "How does it feel?" And they asked me a genuine question. And the question got brought up because they asked me. If my buddy was like, "You want to go have?" He was in town from Austin. He said, "Do you want to go drink? You want to go have some drinks?" I go, "I don't drink anymore." And his immediate reaction was, "What happened?" And I said, what do you mean? He goes, how many days you've been sober? And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? What you, no, I just don't drink. I go, I'm not opposed to it, but I just don't. And he goes, well, why? I said, well, man, where I'm going, there just doesn't need to be alcohol in the body. I'm, I'm focused. I'm, I'm locked in. He's like, man, you were living on a park bench. You were doing this. And I go, and you've done all this. And I said, hey, man, the, the thing that probably shock you is from living on that park bench to now, I'm still further away from where I want to go. Like, I'm, I'm further away from there than there. Like, it's not even close. I go, and he's like, what? And he goes, I just remember when you were this cocky. Like, ah. And I said, you just, but it, I don't know. I almost feel like the higher up I go, yeah. I feel like I haven't done anything. <clears throat> yeah. I think it's different. Like, you know, it's, it's less about, like, for example, okay, in this building right now, we're running a consulting firm. That last month, we grew 235%. That's awesome. Congrats. But David Consulting, thank you. It's grown. We are now doing engagements that used to be $50,000 engagements, became $100,000 engagements, became quarter million dollar engagements. Now we have half a million dollar engagements, soon million dollar engagements, and soon multi eight figure engagements we'll get into, right? Because we're going to be getting higher businesses that are willing to bring us in to help them grow with the yeah. business. Okay. Have I ever ran a consulting firm before? Never. But I feel like I've been a consultant my entire life. The whole career you How? are, though. Yeah, but, but meaning like when I'm 17 years old and my best friend's about to do cocaine and I sit there and I try to get him from not doing it or not selling it, it's a form of a consultant, right? When we're about to do something stupid, one of the friends convinces the other three to not do that stupid thing. You're a consultant. You're consulting Absolutely. and you're going through a process of not doing it, right? Okay. But... Do we have it right now to build this into the largest consulting firm in uh, America? Not yet. Is that a vision? Yes. Will we get there? We'll see. So that's the part where we have to constantly, we have five phases that we're going through with the firm, and we have some of the products that we're doing. You know, If you go to bedavidconsulting.com, we have our five by five on how we take approaches and what we do with a business, and we have our own differentiator that's not like everybody else. Most of these consulting firms, they hire MBA guys who have done two, 300 you know, case studies in school and they're coming and trying to tell you how to grow your business. For us, we have expert operators, EOs, who have gone through it and they're not telling you, here's how to go raise money. They've raised money 20 different times, a couple billion dollars. Here's a thing to look out yeah, for. They've actually Here, done it. They're, so expert operators is our differentiator, but still, okay, we, we don't know how to build a consulting firm. Manect, the app that's right now got a couple hundred thousand downloads and people are using a great experience. We've never built an app like that. So media company, we're getting a half a billion online views a month total. How do we get here? We're still half a billion, half a billion online views per month right now. Wow. But when, you, when you're thinking about this, the mindset comes down to, you know, you have a proven like I'm, I'm interested in things that are evergreen. So when I'm, my, when I'm in my early 20s and I'm trying to find that, what skill set am I going to need to know that's going to benefit me 50 years from now? What is constant? Okay. There's one product that's going to be constant that I'm going to be dealing with for the next from 20 to 80 years old, and that's people. So guess what? Learn everything you can, and it's never ending. Go study yep. people. How to challenge them. 
how to get them to bring the pressure down, how to calm them down, how to get them to work with you, how to, you know, befriend them, how to get them to trust you, uh, how to drive them, push them, how to get a group to work together that don't get along, how to be able to host an event, how to speak from an audience and move them and you're losing this person, how to bring them in, draw them in, how, you know, all of these things, it's constant. For the rest of your life, it's Ever. people, right? So what else is going to be constant if I'm going to be in business? Numbers, data, okay? Guess what? What numbers are the ones that I need the most? What formulas do I need the most? So those things are constant. And then there is the other side is problems that you haven't yet had to overcome. So how do you overcome these problems? Well, if you have a method for problem solving, your method for problem solving can be used in every problem you face. So if you don't have a method for problem solving, you're going to be like, how the hell am I going to solve this problem? But if you have a method for problem solving, for instance, if we're going to be going through an issue like, okay, uh, what's the issue? Technology is down. What part of it is down? Such and such server is down. Who knows a lot about it? How important is this? The level of crisis this is. This is a 10. Who knows a lot about this? Bring them in the room right now. X, Y, Z. Who else do we know that we can call? Such and such. What do we have control over? What do we not have control over? Write them up. We don't have control over this. What we don't have control over, who do we know that can help us get maybe a little bit of influence or we don't have control over? We know nobody. Great. Cross that out. We can't do nothing about it. What do we have control of? We did this. In the future, what can we do for this not to happen again? Well, when we're doing live podcasts, we kind of need two, you know, T1 lines. Who are our two T1 lines with? They're both with Comcast. Why would we get two T1 lines with <laughs> yeah, Comcast? Comcast goes down. Comcast, so, so we need one with Comcast. We need one. So this is the part of yeah. guys, moving forward, we're spending $2,000 a month on both because if one goes on, the other one cannot. Both. So again, but, but the point becomes people, constant. Numbers, constant. Method of solving problems, constant. But how big you think, how content you get, how casual you get, how soft you get, you're not going to know until you got $10 million in a bank, $100 million in a bank, a billion in a bank, more influence, more accolades, how you're going to handle that. That's the unknown part that you're going to know when you get to it. Yeah, with, with the, there's like, I get questions off that a t- freaking ton. Um, about the, like for me, I'm, I hate to say never satisfied, but I'm not, I'm super grateful. I'm like yin and I, I swear it's, you said it earlier, like you're almost bipolar, right? You have to be. It's like one day I feel like I have nothing and the next day I feel like I have everything. I feel like, you know, I'm so thankful for what I have, but I want more, right? But I'm super thankful for everything I have. Where does that create creativity for you come from? I mean, let's be look at what you just said. You're building a consulting firm, right? And why is that? Because you're an entrepreneur and that's what you do. All of your employees, unless you're a mom and pop shop, you're consulting them 24-7. So it's the same thing. But where does that creativity come from? Because you go, by the way, my next great. We just did a podcast with a guy just got on. It was Justin Long. He was he's got a couple hundred thousand followers. We did a, I, I was on his podcast. And uh, we started talking about Manek. He's like, what is this? And you, we have it on camera. His reaction was like, this is the greatest thing ever. He's like <laughs> PVD, so he got got him connected with David. We it. got him yeah. on, but which, by the way, you could go tell Pabs. I probably got more people on Manek than anyone else. Ask Lisa it. and David. Yeah, but you get Manek. Great well, idea. We're doing a separate Manek event at the Vault Conference. Um, we'll, you'll hear about that later on. But we got a bunch of things going on with Manek. And I love it the way you can connect with people and help people inspire. But it's like, okay, you have this great business. You sell. Then you I send a lot of guys your way. I don't. Know I did tell so you and they sell. We, Listen, I would tell everybody, this is why you get on here, not because of anything. We we had a guy, he's in Dallas, Fort Worth. He reached out to you. He didn't tell you he was in Dallas. I asked him. He asked roofing advice. You said, go with Dustin. Yep. He calls me up. We we start talking. I said, you know, where are you located? Because I ask a lot of questions back because I generally want to help these people. He said, I'm a DFW. I said, why don't you just come by the office? So uh, do you help? A Manek guy. Manek. Fantastic. Comes by the office. Guess what? He's starting next week with us. He's a sales manager, writes two million dollars. <laughs> so you're why? So you're looking at my neck, and this is I love it. This is why you don't have ask it. questions though. Yeah. I sent him a ten minute response uh, voice, good for you, and another one because I I could you. Well, could, you could, respond same day, and it's a hundred percent. You got a hundred hundred percent five star. Yeah, so I said, Papas don't want it. I see. No, I, see it. I, I love. It. I love, but it's it's helping people. But where do you come up with that? You you're man. The podcast is incredible. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's funny you say that. So let's talk about that, right? Because everything to me is muscles that I want to build. So what muscles can we not build? What muscles can we build? Um, Okay, I walk into this building the first time. The guy who designed this building is one of the most famous designers in South Florida. He does all the massive hotels in South Beach, in Miami. So he comes in and he's got an eye for things. 
I would have never thought how to put this together, okay? Yeah. The way he did First Floor, the bank vault became the podcast, everything you see here, you know, how it took place, the offices, all these things. I just like the way he designed this building. Guess what? I have zero interest to get good at that. Yeah. I have no interest. Zero. Zero. Because there is, there's eight different types of genius, and I'm not going to remember all of them, but I'll give you a couple of them. One of them is intrapersonal. One of them is interpersonal. Uh, another one of them is spatial. Spatial is like you can see real estate, put the wall here, put the door here, put the window here. I have none of that. One of them is numbers, numerical. One of them is music, you know. And, and there's a couple other ones that you can go through. One of them is athletic, like you have a certain... But well, we all have a different kind of a genius, right? Mine may be different than yours, than his, than anybody else's. The one muscle that I don't think we work on enough is the creative imagination muscle. What does this mean? If you have lunch with me and you've been working with me with 20 years, ask any one of my employees. Every sales meeting, every manager meeting Monday morning, anything I start a meeting with my kids, dinner, whatever it is, we're having a conversation and we're debating something. It doesn't matter what it is. So for example, let me ask you guys a question, yes. So this restaurant we walked in, how long did it take to sit us down? 14 minutes. Did you like where the host's table was at and how they made us wait this? How would you have made it more efficient? What if we did that? Oh, interesting. So look at the way we walk in. Why do they have the VIP room here and the wine room is here? Well, how would you have done it? I would have made it more exclusive. How would you have? So now the brain is Thinking, working yeah. on being creative, right? Okay. Why do I love doing these elite masterminds or these general masterminds with business owners? You've been to Vault Conference. Yeah. You've been to events. What do we do when we go through our three hours of just, hey, what problems do you guys, what do you want to do? You know what happens during those three hours? You know what our brain is doing during those three it's hours? thinking and creating the whole time. All we're thinking about yeah, is how to solve problems. Yep. We're being creative. That brain, the mind is working. We don't use this skill set enough. No. I had a kid, one of our relatives. She comes to our house. Her family members, they're drug addicts. When I say family members, I mean... Like, like, like mom, dad, parents, brother, sister, yeah. Hardcore. Yeah. Never there with the kid. Never talk to the kid. Nothing. Comes to the house. And one night, we're sitting in my son's bedroom. She's sitting right there. And when she looks at me, she looks like she's pale and has nothing to do. I feel so bad for this girl. We wanted to adopt her, but we did a completely different thing. We're so, ex we're so excited with the decision we made with her. She's doing so great right That's now. That's awesome. And I said to her, I said, hey, do you think the future looks bright? Yes. Why? Dustin, one hour, she can't come up with anything. This is a 13-year-old kid. With a, yeah, a I'm asking, do you think the future looks bright? Can't tell me anything. She says yes, but she can't tell me she anything. Me My son is in the shower, okay? He comes in late, 30 minutes while I'm talking to her, she walks in. My wife is sitting there, we're all sitting there. I say, hey, Tico, do you believe the future looks bright? Yes. Tell me why. Well, let me go through it. One, because of this, two, because of this, three, because of this. Within 30 seconds, he gives five, and he says, you want me to give you more? Yeah. Boom. I asked my other son, boom. I asked my daughter, boom. I asked my wife, boom. I'm asking everybody. I go back to her. Do you think the future looks bright? She starts crying. I said, why are you crying? Because this is such a hard question. It's not a hard question. No one's asked you. No one's ever taught her anything. No that. one's worked your brain to be thinking about these kinds. So I said, now that you saw 20 different examples, because four people gave five, yeah. give me yours. He says, well, I think the future looks bright because, uh, you know, Jennifer. Why? Because it's great to have somebody that's got an example that I can look up to. She starts crying. Very emotional moment, obviously. Yeah. I said, why else? Well, I think the future looks bright because you're very tough on me and you've made me read every day and I've never read more in the last week than I've read in my entire life. I've never, I just read more in the last week than my entire life. I said, why, why, why does that mean future looks bright? It's because I learned so many things of information in these books. I never thought they were in books. So why else does future looks bright? Well, because I do believe in God and if God's with me, why else do you? 
These kids, their brain, you need to ask and let them come up with solutions and why and all that. We don't, we're not don't working. Do so if you don't do that with kids, if you don't do that with your company, ideation, you know, hey, our goal this year, we have five clear goals for the company. You know, what we have, vault 10,000, 100,000 uh, pieces of future looks bright, sales merge, Manek downloads. You got uh, the number of views that we got on YouTube and how we want our top line revenue to grow this year over last year. Everybody knows our OKR, what we're running for. For each one of these companies, we had a meeting, ideas, how do we grow them? How do we get to this? How do we get to that? Everybody is forced to come up with ideas. Everybody. Yeah. And that constant conversation and being in that mode every day, eventually your brain on the inside is cut up. It's, just it's, it's shredded yeah. because it's creative. It's all the time. But if you don't use it, it's fat. Yeah. It has no ability to be creative because you're not putting it to Mind muscle. We, we do it. I do it with my kid. And my, I do it with my son. So every day I take my son to school. So we have it's two things. One, I do it for our, our, we have a workout group. So in my garage, I turned my, so my wife was pissed. So like, this is like one of the things that like, it was like almost a deal breaker. I clean, we have a three car garage, but I took the two car garage, cleaned it out, completely put a whole gym in there. And we have 12 to 13 people that come over, 6 a.m. we work out, people that work for me. And uh, we work out every day. Uh, we do cold plunge, we do 45 minute workout, and then at the end we do like a prayer slash good word. It's completely changed your life and everyone's thinking in there because the whole time we're working out, we're chopping it up, we're talking about work, growth, how we can be better, and at the end, we assign a good word to somebody. So like if you, maybe it's Tuesday, it's you. And so you come up with something, a good word or something going on, you say a prayer, pray for something that's going on. And it's so life-changing because everybody talks about it and usually a couple people will go, but it's just your mind's constantly thinking. But Love it. With, with my son, and I, I, my question is for you, this is, uh, with, with him, so Connor I take because he's six. I take him every day. It's like my ritual. And we, we, we live five minutes from the school. It's just on the other side of our community. And when I get him in the car, I go, Connor, what are we going to do today? And it's the same every day. It's like, we're going to have a great day, Dad. Why? Because we're going to make it a great day. Time that. And I said, what's the four things we do? He's like, well, I always work hard. We don't quit. We don't give up. And we always help people. And so when he, he's in kindergarten, we could FaceTime him right now. He'd say, what are you going to do today? But it triggers him to go. And so what was funny was the other day, he was in a mood. He was acting like his mom. Sorry, babe. And he's like, Dad, I'm not doing the good word today. He got so mad. And I said, you're going to do it. He goes, I'm not going to do it. I said, OK, fair enough. You really don't want to do it. He goes, no. I'm like, OK. So you get in the car, take him to school. Guess what happened that day? He got in trouble and he got disciplined. And so the next morning he woke up and he, he said, Dad, can I talk to you before you go to school? I said, yeah, man, what's up? He goes, man, uh, I didn't do the good word yesterday. And I said, no, you didn't. And I said, but why does that bother you? He goes, then I didn't have a great day. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, can we do it today again? But we do it every day, but the one day he didn't. But now, to your point, is I, I say, I give him questions, Connor. What does, you know, consistency mean? And he's six, so a lot of times he doesn't have a clue. He goes, Dad, I don't really know. So we talk about it, and I'm like, why is it important? And so I give him these thought processes, so he's constantly thinking, but he's so far advanced. And just the, the life skills, we don't, we don't do it enough. Like he said the other day, he's like, Dad, you know, first couple of weeks of school, I don't, I don't have a lot of friends. And I said, well, how many people are you talking to? He's like, well, nobody talks to me, Dad. I said, here's what you're going to do. Every day you go to class, you're going to walk up to every kid in your class, and you're going to go, hey, what's up, Patrick? Have a great day, man. Hope you have, and I said, do it to everybody. He goes, why, Dad? I said, just do it. See what happens. Two weeks later, he goes, Dad, everybody in that class is my friend uh, and does whatever I, I want. That. He's like, yeah. they do whatever I want. I love that. But you, you, what brought that up for me was you said every day, you're like, I will be one day. Mm -hmm. What are the things you do, especially for entrepreneurs? And it can be for your kids, but it can be for your, your team. What are some of the things that you're doing like that for your family to help create that? The, the, from what? From the mindset? From the mindset. Or? I know the restaurant you said with the team, yeah, with I the mean, family. So, for instance, you know, we'll be in the car, and I'll say, you know, we got a long drive. I'll say, okay, guys, let's let's get into it. So you can have a beachfront home, a uh, house on the mountains, a lakefront, or a penthouse. Which one do you choose? And then they'll start giving their answers. Well, you know, I would probably, you know, have a beachfront or this, and everybody's kind of giving a lazy answer, right? Yeah. And then my oldest will say, well, it depends. If mm -hmm. I have kids. Probably a lake house, but maybe I'd want to have a lake house. But if I'm only living by myself, I wouldn't mind living in the mountains, but it probably... So he's now, his brain is now going. Yeah. So there's lazy answers and there's active answers Absolutely. as well, right? You have one right now? I have three. I have, have Connor, Kobe, Gianna. Okay. So how old are they? Uh, six, three, and one. Okay. So one time these two guys got into a big fight very big fight like fist fight the two brothers yeah big time and they started saying words to each other 
I don't like that. I sat him down. I said, you know, that's when you really get bad with me when you do that to each yeah. other. And you, you know what kind of bad words? Like words that are piercing to your identity. Yeah. Okay. I don't like that. So I brought him back to the house, to my room in the closet. I'm about to go take a shower because we've been playing outside in the sun all day. I said, okay, guys, here's what we're doing. I said, the world's going to be so nasty to both of you guys. Gabby, I said, there's going to be so many people that are going to say so many things. I said, there is no relationship more important that you guys have to each other, including me, than you guys being good together because you guys are going to be in each other's lives for a long time to come. I said, I want you to sit here for 15 minutes, tell each other a sincere compliment. If you bullshit and you don't give a sincere compliment, you lose iPad for four weeks. Whoever gives better compliments gains more, but it has to be sincere and you got to think about it. So I step outside, I'm in the bathroom, like I can try to hear these guys yeah. and they start, but they're trying to get it right. And I put the phone to record them while they're going. That's so awesome. the phone's right there, I'm recording them, they're giving each other compliment. One by one by one by one they're going and it's getting better and better and better and better. I go shower, I come out, their time is up. They're not slowing down. They want to keep going. They They're going. enjoying the game. And they're like, well, thank you, Tico. That was very nice of you. You yeah. really think that? Yeah. It became, so, so awesome. it's like, oh, thank yeah. you. You really believe that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you are always like that. You know, you make a very good omelet. You make yeah. a very yeah. good, good omelet. omelet. Like, yeah, he doesn't make an omelet. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, he does yeah. make yeah. the omelet. It's That's like, awesome. I kind of like the way you make the omelet. Because remember, it has to be sincere. It can't be fake when you're giving a compliment to each other. There's so many ways you can do this, but the most important thing is, what is your goal? What are you trying to do? You're trying to build them into leaders? What skill sets are they gonna need later on when you're not around, when they need to be able to survive independently? You gotta put them in situations to develop those muscles more early on. Yeah, I got. I know we gotta wrap up in a minute, but I got one question, and I I know you wanna go on a 40 year run. It's, it's, it's maybe, maybe two questions, but actually I'm gonna still, I know we got five minutes, we'll make it quick. You, you brought up, and I see you a lot, bring up God a lot. And has that always been there for you? Yeah. And it, so is that the question? It was. And when was, it is two part. And when was the turning point for that? Like when, what, like. Yeah. So I was, you know, when, when you're living in Iran, I'm going to uh, Sunday school. And Sunday school, I'm always getting kicked out. Because in Iran, we're getting bombed on. It's like, listen. Don't tell me about God, okay? If God is so great, why are we getting why bombed on all of a sudden? Yeah. I was not a fan of it. So I'm, I'm an atheist. I don't care about God. And, you know, we go to Germany. This one pr priest that we used to go to school and we used to go to church and we used to watch this guy. One day he comes to my house and he's flirting with my mom. I'm like, you got to get the hell out of here. My mom and my sister remember till today. I'm like, you can't be here. You got to get, I'm 11 years old. I said, I don't want to see you do what you're doing. You got to get out. This guy's 55, 60 years old. And that's when I realized the natural protective genes boys have were something to, I was ready to really hurt this man. Yeah. He didn't do anything, by the way. He was just flirting with my mom as a priest. And I don't like that. I said, you got to get out. You're not going to be able to do this here. So he leaves. And then in that moment, something happened to me. But it caused me to trust the church even less and God even less. So then I come out, I go to school here in Glendale, and then I go to the army. And a man in the army, when I qualified as a high PT score, they send us to this camp to be around this man. And one requirement, every night we have to do the Bible study for an hour. And we're with this guy and we're doing Bible study. At the end of it, he says, son, this Bible was given to me December 24th of 1974 by my parents, Christmas Eve. I think you need this more than I do. I said, honestly, sir, you're wasting your time. This means a lot. Keep it to you. I don't need this. I'm not going to do anything with this book. I'm telling you, don't give it to me. He says, son, whatever you do with it, it's totally up to you. God told me to give it to you. Scott, you're going to give me this book. He gives me, you don't have the Bible till today, but really? he gave it to me. Yeah. He gave it to me September of 97. I have it till today. September 97. How many years is that? September 97. <laughs> 27, 26, 27, 27 years. Wow. It's in my office. So then I leave. I'm like, this was kind of weird. So I start praying three times a day. And my prayers, I've told the story many times, where it's like very basic. Look, God, I don't know you exist. I think it's fake. I think it's for weak people. But if you do, here's where I'm at. Boom. And I'm kind of going through the whole conversation. Anyways, long story short, I'm dating a girl, love this girl, want to get married to her. I want to have kids with this girl. We're in love. We're together for three years. Certain set of events happens. Her ex-boyfriend gets into a car accident, 
128 stitches, you know, in his, whatever the number is in his head. He fell off the freeway. He's in the middle of the car, uh, a truck. They're coming back from a, you know, trip that they were together. And he's going down the freeway San Diego, and it's a bad situation. Great guy, sweetheart of a guy. He's in a coma. He comes out, doesn't recognize his mom, doesn't recognize anybody, wow. doesn't recognize his brother. He's only asking for one person, and that's my girlfriend. He goes to her. She goes to her, him, at the hospital, comes back, says, I can't be with you anymore. Wow. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, because she left him to be with me, and she felt guilty. So we're supposed to get married and have a family. Boom, I lose her. While I'm going through that, this story I've never told. While I'm going through that, I'm studying for my Series 7 exam. Dearborn, the manual is this big, Series 7. Every page is tears. You see teardrops in it. Because I'm 21, 22 years old, not having a clue what the hell I'm going to do. And I'm studying for my Series 7 next to my grandmother's grave at Forest Lawn in L.A. off the 134 freeway right by Disney. Wow. And I'm going through this. She's coming back, and I'm listening to three songs by Raul de Blasio. It's unnecessary facts, but for me, I remember the songs, Raul de Blasio. It's on repeat for me. I'm listening to it. Come back. We are back together two more years on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. We knew it wasn't going to work out. Eventually, at the last month, we're um, like, this is it. We're going through it. And it's like just fighting. It's just like it's it's bad. Yeah, that's it's just, it's, yeah. it, that event, just totally. And I didn't know how to handle it. It's just a very bad thing that we went through. Long story short, I tell her, I said, look, I love you. I want to marry you, but I can't do it by myself. I think we need God. You okay if we go look for a church? She freaks out. We go to a church. It's like, you becoming religious. I said, I'm not becoming religious. Man. I just don't know how to make a marriage work. I need help. So I start going to everything, Scientology, LDS, anything you name, I went to it. Long story short, I uh, um, end up finding a church, Shepherd of the Hills, uh, January 21st of 2004, I give my life to Christ. So that's what, how many years is that? 25 years old. I'm born 1978. I think it's 25 years. Yeah, 25 yeah. years. 25 years old. I go through that process. And then from there, it's just everything was like, whatever I do, I'm going to try to do it based on the foundation of God. Every Friday night, a year and a half prior to me giving my life, I was doing Bible study at uh, Pasadena. And uh, we we're four or five of us were doing Bible study. Uh, eventually, at 25 years old, I'm the guy holding one of these signs, John 3, 16, Jesus is coming. Can you visualize it? No, I can't. This? I'm oh, doing that yeah. in Colorado, old, old town in Colorado. I'm holding a sign in front of bars, talking to drunk yeah. people at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm that guy. Uh, yeah, I was probably the guy yeah. in the bar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and by the way, I was at yeah. the bar was just a, six weeks prior to that. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like, so I, I go through that phase, and then eventually uh, the bigger the vision became, I just said, listen, uh, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to work. I'm going to grow. I'm going to do my best to stay humble. And I'm going to lean on you because I've got a big vision. And he kept having miracles happen back to back to back. Life changing. So from 25 till so, today, yeah. behind closed doors, years. my foundation is all good. I love that, man. Thank you for sharing that. I feel the same way. I didn't, I didn't think he was there for what I went through. And then it was almost like he spoke to me. And he, what was ironic, he spoke to me during my best times. He didn't speak to me in my worst times, which I felt like. And then I credit a lot of the good times for that, right? Because where I came from, like, it wasn't bombing, but it was my shit, and it was, he's not there. And I know we're pressed on time. This is the last one. I want, I want to end it on this one because you want to go on a 40-year run. Mm -hmm. Let's say that 40-year run's done. You said it. You're, you're at your retirement speech. They're hanging your jerseys in the rafters, and you're giving your retirement speech. What does it look like? When it's all done, what would you have accomplished? Do you know? Do you see it? Oh, yeah, of course. I can't say it. It's like Big Fish. You ever see that movie? Come on. It. You got to say it. Can you give us a hint? No, I can't say it. You can't it say it. I can't. Because give it there. It's, but it's, but you don't even know what I mean. To me, it's, it's, it's a very intimate relationship with God, and, and I'm, I'm loyal to it, but I, I know. Like, I love that. Okay, then you got to answer I, this one. I know. Okay, then yeah. you got to answer this one. I wasn't going to ask it. You have one podcast left. And you got to pick BizDoc, Adam, or Vinny. <laughs> Who you got? That you got to answer them. You're not going to give us a hint. There we go. One well, shot. It's the, I, 
I I have one podcast. Well, and don't give me the political shit because I know you want to go so, for office where you say so, if it's business, I got time. Yeah. Don't you got to be one podcast left. I have one. Po- which one of those three would I have on? The yeah, podcast? you. So you have you're gonna you can interview whoever you want. Guest doesn't matter. It'll be a random guest, but you have yeah. it's the PBD final episode, and you have you can only have one co-host, BizDoc, Adam, or Vinny. You got to pick one. I I'm gonna tell you like you know. Uh, uh, because in my brain, I can't give that answer I guess, yeah, 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 without that. like meaning. Yeah. Like, for example, today I'm doing a podcast with who was on? Uh, uh, Sonnen. Son. Yeah. Okay. Tom wasn't on. Yeah. Tom doesn't know UFC. Yeah. How am I going to put yeah. Tom on? Yeah. But yesterday I had Andy Stumpf, you know, a Navy SEAL. Yeah. SEAL Team Six. He's on Manect. I'm with Vinny. Adam's yeah. not on. What is Adam going to say? He yeah. was not in the military. Vinny was an airman of the year yeah. in the Air Force, right? You know, but tomorrow we're doing Candace Owens and Chris Cuomo at the club, right? Yep. So that's going to be who? All of them. Because Vinny, Tom, and Adam have done podcasts with Cuomo and Candace Owens. So it's kind of going to be an easy yeah, it's, to do. But, uh, yeah, everything is context. Okay, so if, if you, you don't – yeah, I know. If you don't know the guest, so you can't pick the guest. So it's going to be a random drawing guest. you got to pick one. Oh, if it's like a random, random. one? Then, then my risk is going to be who is able to counterbalance the technicalities and be able to have the widest range of topics to speak uh, uh, in in depth, and that's going to be Tom. That's awesome. It's not even a question. He's he's yeah. phenomenal. But um, we appreciate your time, man. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, thank it. you for being on the DG show. We appreciate everything you're doing. Go check them out. Valuetainment. Go to the conference. Get the coaching. Get on the next. Get on everything. It's incredible what he's doing. On the neck, you can connect with people, but you can you can you can lead people, but then you can also reach out to people as well and get advice. I've done both. Get on the value tainment, get on the podcast is amazing. Everything they do. I love the variety of guests. And then look, I've done the coaching, I've been to the conferences, you should do it. There's something for everybody, right? That's the that's the great thing is you don't have to do the one on one. You there's there's something for everyone, mm-hmm. but make sure you get a mentor because they're gonna guide you on things that you don't see around the corner. So we appreciate it, Patrick. Anytime, love, man. Bro. We'll see you. Really Thank enjoyed you, it. Thank you. Thank you.